Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, I'm going to take a, a rather roundabout way of demonstrating another iteration statement, the while iteration statement. And to demonstrate this, we're going to open up a text file and read each line of the text file displaying its contents in a console window uh, until we get to the end of the file. So beyond the specifics of learning about the while statement and how to read text from a text file, there will be some other key ideas like how to add other file types to our project, how to work with empty or null values, how to change the properties of something using the properties window, and uh, quite a bit more actually. So let's go ahead and get started. You can see that I've already created a new project. Uh, called read text file while take a moment and set that project up using the steps that we outlined in previous videos and I'm gonna go ahead the very first thing and create a new text file in our project and to do this there's a couple of different ways to achieve this the way I prefer is to right click in the solution Explorer on the project name itself so I'm gonna right click and select add and just hover my mouse cursor over the add menu item until I find new item. This will open up the add new item dialog and from here what I want to do is scroll I believe all the way down till we find a text file and I'm going to name this text file values.txt and click the add button and so now you can see we have a second file in our solution explorer that belongs to this project furthermore it's been opened up in our main area as a kind of a notepad inside of uh, Visual Basic Express or Visual Studio. And now we can switch between the module1.vb file and the values.txt file here in this main area. Pretty cool. If I wanted to close, for example, a uh, tab down, all I need to do is click the X button. And to open it back up, I'll just double click it here in the Solution Explorer. I can also move the tabs and reorder them and a lot of other neat stuff too but we'll leave it at that for now let's go ahead and just create some content here in our text file that will read out and display in our console window so I'm just gonna type 4 8 15 16 23 and 42 and I'm gonna save that and then close it and so now what we want to do is open that file and print those numbers to screen so I'm going to start typing a long passage of code. Again, please take a moment, pause the video, catch up to me while I type. Okay, so I finished typing the code, but as it sits right now, this code will not run. We can see the word stream reader has a blue squiggly line under it, indicating that we'll be unable to compile this application until we fix it. The problem is that Visual Basic can't resolve the word stream reader. In other words, it has no idea what we're referring here to. The problem is that stream reader doesn't live in any of the default namespaces associated with our project. In fact, it lives in the system.io namespace, and we currently haven't told Visual Basic where to look for it. So I'll explain what namespaces are in a future lesson, but for right now, just know that we'll need to fix this before we can continue, and I'll show you the technique for that in just a moment. Before we fix it, though, let me explain what each line of code is trying to do. 
Uh, first of all, we're going to try to use the stream reader class, the stream reader object, to open up a file called values.txt. So we're going to create a new variable called my reader of type stream reader. Again, if that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, don't worry. But think of a stream reader uh, working like a straw. It's a class that knows how to uh, stream data, uh, how to read data from a stream. Uh, so it will suck a little bit of information line by line out of the values.txt file and into our program where it can be processed or in our case simply printed to screen. So then we declare in line 7 this string called line and then we begin to evaluate using our while loop. And a while statement or a while loop is a lot like our for next or for each uh, except that it will continue to loop an undetermined number of times until this condition becomes false. Now we kind of have a double negative thing going on here. So while line is not nothing is the way I guess you could read it. So while not is nothing line. And so this is a built-in Visual Basic function that looks at the value inside of the variable. If it's indeterminate or null rather or nothing, then it will break out of this while loop. However, in our case, to begin with, string is not nothing, it's not indeterminate. It is known, it's just an empty string. It has no values inside of the string, but it's still got a value, an empty string. That's a difficult concept for beginners to understand. The difference between knowing that it's empty and a null, which means it doesn't know what the value is or it has no value whatsoever. A uh, difficult concept again, admittedly, but I'll come back to that in just a moment as we work through the body of this of this loop. So what we'll, we'll do is use a method called readLine on our myReader, which is a type stream reader, this straw that knows how to suck data in, okay? And so we're gonna say, go ahead and, and suck in your first line of data. And we use the, the readLine method to accomplish that, and we set the value, whatever the value is, to the variable line. Here we do a quick check. As long as line is not nothing, so it's a similar syntax to what we saw earlier, then print it to the console window. Otherwise, don't print it to the console window. We'll come back, hit that condition in our loop, and exit out. Uh, in which case, we'll close down the straw, we'll essentially just throw it away, and then we'll uh, get back to the console.readLine. Okay, so that in a nutshell is how it works. The, the key idea here is that if readLine hits the very end of the file, it will assign a null value, an in, in, uh, undeterminate value, to our variable called line, at which case it will be nothing. So if not is nothing, it will be nothing, it won't print this line, it'll hit this check, and it will exit out of the loop, okay? Hopefully that kind of makes sense. So now we have to resolve the issue that we have with our application. The blue squiggly line, and we've seen this little, uh, we've seen this little red dash before. If I hover my mouse cursor over it, it will give us the uh, smart tag error correction option. So I'm gonna click the down arrow and it says type uh, stream reader is not defined and it gives us some possible solutions to this. Uh, the Visual Basic IDE or the Visual Studio IDE knows that it found a match for the stream reader class inside of this namespace called system.io. So we can click this first option to import that namespace. In other words, we want uh, the Visual Basic compiler to look in this namespace to find this class. And that indeed is the option that we'll choose here. If I can get back there, let's have our mouse cursor over. There we go. And I'm going to click that link at the top and notice that it imports system.io. Now a couple things have happened here. Stream Reader went from having a blue squiggly line under it and being in black text to being in this aqua blue color, which means that uh, at least the pre-compilation process identified correctly this class, and it doesn't give us any more build errors, 
Uh, so I think it correctly found the class and now we're able to create a new instance of that class and use it throughout our application. Okay, what does it mean when I say create an instance of the class? Again, we'll come back to classes and creating instances, the new keyword and all of that in another video. Let's just take it at its face value for now and we'll reserve a more full explanation for that line of code uh, a little bit later on. So we can run the application now, but it's still not going to work. We're going to get an exception on the first line of code. And that exception is file not found exception because it's looking for the value.txt file in the debug folder in the bin directory of our project. Now, if we were to open up Windows Explorer and navigate our way down to find the projects, uh, let's see. Well, first of all, I guess we need to save this. So let's. Stop all that, let's save all this. Great, okay, now we can open this back up. Go to Documents, go to Visual Studio 2010 or whatever version you're using or edition. Go to Projects, go to Read Text File While, navigate into the Project Folder. We'll look in the Bin Directory, in the Debug Folder, <laughs> okay, and you'll see that we have a number of files, but none of them are the TXT file. What we need to do is this. We need to tell uh, the Visual Basic compiler that during the compilation process, we want to take this file, which currently has a build action of content and a copy to output directory directive of do not copy here in this properties window. And we want to change copy to output directory if newer. So if we make a change to this values.txt file, then we want it to overwrite the one that's already there. Otherwise, uh, just leave it alone. But nonetheless, we want it to copy if it doesn't exist there because it's going to look for that file relative to the execution context of our application, which will be in this, in this debug folder where the actual exe file is at, okay? So wherever the exe is, by default, unless we give it some other qualifier here before the file name, it's going to look in the same directory. And that's not just true with the stream reader. That's true whenever we reference files uh, within Visual Basic and the .NET framework. Okay. All right, so now let's run the application. We should see the results that we expect. And indeed, we do. Great. Okay, so there were a couple of really important concepts here. Uh, for now, hopefully, you've got another uh, iteration statement under your belt. Use the while statement when there's an indeterminate number of times that you'll need to iterate through a block of code. You don't know up front. It's not like the for or the for each, uh, where it really is dependent on a preset uh, size of an array or a number from 0 to 10. In this case, we don't know how many lines are in this text file, so just keep looping until uh, the condition is no longer met when the condition not is nothing of line is uh, no longer true then it will break out of the loop okay so you can see that there's a need for both of those situations and therefore that's why the while exists as well as for and for each we also learned about the stream reader class at least in theory how i compared it to a straw that allows us to suck data in line by line from from a text file using its re uh, read line method uh, and then we closed it at the very end and removed the straw by using the close method and uh, while we were talking about the stream reader class we saw how uh, we need to help the visual basic compiler to resolve references to classes by providing an import statement we were able to use a smart tag within the uh, code window to accomplish that for us and we'll talk about namespaces and all of that a little bit later. I know I've been putting it off, but we will get there. Uh, we also talked about null values and what happens on this line of code and how that affects the, the flow of, of the code within our while statement and our if then statement. Uh, and then finally, we, we added a text file and we learned how to set properties of the text file in the properties window. We'll use the properties window, not just for items that are selected in the Solution Explorer, but then also when we're building visual applications to change the properties of text boxes and buttons. Also, if we were to use 
uh, the Visual Studio IDE to work with a database. We can affect certain things about tables and columns using the properties window. So it has its utility far beyond just the context of the Solution Explorer. Okay, so that's enough for now. Uh, hang in there. We're doing great. See you in the next video. Thank you.